Howdy folks, Kirk, Jason, Dan, and Carl here today. We are doing some interior plastering in this garage. Got a bunch of stuff inside, but that's another, another story because it's a different product. Anyway, I'll show you guys if you have a new electrical panel. How many of you guys have got new electrical panels? When you buy houses these days, they want you to get rid of the old knob and tube and put a new electrical before you can get a loan. So anyway, these, these people had this house a long time. They got a new panel here, so this old one is no longer good. They put the new one in. So what we're doing is we are putting it back together. And while we're here, they've made, the electricians made a lot of holes. I'll, I'll give you an example, guys. Um, they have to cut a lot of holes to run a lot of wires. So here's what you guys could do if, if you don't say, man, I don't want to call Kirk and family. I want to do it myself. Here's what you do. Get pieces of wood like this. And there's, a, there's endless ways to do this, guys. I could come up with 25 different ways. But for the sake of how we usually do it, I'll show you this. We'll take a piece of wood like this. It's just a one by three. And we'll cut a whole bunch of pieces. I'll take the Milwaukee saw there. It's a battery operated. And we just cut a whole bunch of pieces. Then when we have that done, we'll fish it in here and here and put a screw into here and here. Now that screw should set, say, a sixteenth of an inch or an eighth. Now that holds that in place. Is that all we do? No. Now we put a bonding agent around the perimeter. And you guys don't need to be as uh, thorough as we are, but we're thorough. We put a bonding agent around the perimeter. That's what this pink stuff is. It's a bonding agent. Then we cut a piece of wire and we put that mesh in there. So now how our Structa Light, and Structa Light is a, a plaster, it's going to mushroom through this. It's going to mushroom through these holes and here. Does it need to mushroom? No, it doesn't. It could just be solid too, a solid backing. That's what they have here. I'll show you one more thing while we're talking about mushrooming. Uh, I don't know if the camera will show this now, but inside here we have wood lath, old wood lath. And you could see the, the Structa Light mushrooming through that old wood lath. That old wood lath was... In 1890 to about 1920, I still see it used in 1930 and 42 because of inventory. And the folks there, they call this a Kirk. What are all these little holes? <laughs> I said, well, if you got little holes all over the sheetrock, that's button board. Button board was usually about 1950 to 1960. So that's when they used a the button board. The same theory in mind or the same method, the same theory, meaning the holes in the button board, the plaster would go through, it would adhere to the button board, and then it would mushroom in back of those holes. That's why it's called button board. And that's how it would give it more adhesion. It would stick forever. It, that stuff worked. Let me show you a few other things since we're talking about this kind of stuff, guys. Okay. We got a lot of little holes here and there, a lot of little holes. Um, they're everywhere. And where they have this right here where it's really smooth, and we got this pink stuff, the pink stuff's the bonding agent. It's a uh, plaster weld by Weldcrete. But if you go to Home Depot or Lowe's, you'll buy um, Quickcrete because they don't sell Weldcrete at uh, Home Depot or Lowe's. You have to go to the plastering yard. So this pink stuff over here is just because when I plaster this, I'm going to skim this just to give it this sandy look. And Structolite base coat is sandy guys it's used for hospitals and schools and has been used for well over 140 years uh i wanted to point something else out too since i'm here like if you close in your electrical panels like say this is, they had some light switches they're not going to use them so what we did was we put the bonding agent around it there are no wires in here and we just put a little bit of wire and when i plaster this i'm going to fill this whole box up that far it's just going to plaster right through this metal if you do have wires here, guys, put some kind of, make sure the wires are capped and or put a membrane over there too. Uh, that way no plaster gets in between the wires and shorts anything out. I want to show you guys one last thing before I start to plaster this. And I'm, we're going to plaster this uh, in, as soon as we're done showing you this. This is a job I did 35 years ago. And right here, well, I guess you would, you would come on that side. 
<laughs> the people say, Kirk, you remember this job? And I thought, yeah, I did that for McNeil. John and McNeil, they're retired now. They're my age. I see them occasionally, and they always say, hey, Kirk, you retired yet? And I go, man, I'm in my prime. Uh, but anyway, 35 years ago, we did this. And does it match on the money? It does. But when I, when I did that, I told them, guys, this has been painted at least uh, 20 times. Every 10 years, you should prime something and paint it. And every year you do that, it softens it. So this is very soft. This is a knockdown dash. This is a knockdown dash, but it's uh, fresher because it's only been painted a couple times. Um, did they paint that six times in the 35 years? I don't know, but I can tell it's, uh, it's when you're trying to soften something, use a big fat nap roller. Anyway, I'm, I'm going to get back to this. Jay, as me and Dan are going to plaster this up, but for the sake of showing you guys how to plaster it and how to use Structolite, Structolite takes three to five hours to set. And we are going to put accelerators in it because, you know, I don't want to wait three to five hours for each patch to set. So Jay is going to determine, or Dan, how much accelerators to put in this stuff so that I can do these patches in two to three minutes. I can do the big ones in five minutes and float them. Floating means I take a sponge float like your dish, in, your, your kitchen sponge, but on a handle, and we float it. And what does that do? It brings out the aggregate, brings out the sand. It's a, the sand, aggregate is a fancy, fancy word for this sand right here. And that's what we want to do. We want to match this sand. Anyway, they're going to they're gonna match, uh, mix up some, and we'll show you how to do the fun part. Okay, guys, the fun part. Now, we never know. <laughs> it always, it depends on the material here, how fast it sets, guys. And I can see already, uh, this is setting fast. Sometimes we'll use it, and before we could even get the bucket here, it's set. Okay, so I can see this is setting fast, so what I planned on doing, I'm going to change. All right, this is done until I go to float that. But because this is already hardening, oh shit, <laughs> I'm going to lose that bucket, but that's okay. Uh, I'm going to lose it because... It depends on our accelerator sometimes. Sometimes we put that accelerator in there and it just takes off. Sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it does. So I'm going to try to use as much of this as I can before it's gone. Will I be able to use that whole bucket? Doubtful. But I'm going to try because it's always a drag to throw it away. Uh, now what I'm looking for is big holes. Big holes to put this on. Getting stiff, getting stiff. Add some excitement to my life. Okay. Getting stiff. Sometimes we'll have it, and I tell you this stuff sets in three to five hours. If it's set in three to five hours, that's a real drag. We could end up being here forever. So we put this accelerator in it a lot of times, guys. You lose it. <laughs> How many buckets have we lost? More than I could think about. Okay, so I'm, I'm hustling, trying to get this on. And I don't want to lose all this through the wire. But, so I don't want to press very, very super hard. I just want to, I want to utilize this to the best. Meaning, sure, I can be in a hurry and waste it right through the wire, but that would be kind of goofy. So, <laughs> that's when you know that's pretty stiff. I only got a couple hawks in here, and I know this stuff, so I will, I'm not going to lose anything. All I'm going to do is put it where it's needed, but that was a close one. So when we mix our next batch, we know put a little bit less of the accelerator in it because... Um, it's setting fast, and there's too many reasons for me to go into of why, but there are definitely reasons why that happens. Uh, it's usually the age, age of the material, dirty tools, things like that. So I have this right here, and it's already stiff. So now I'm going to just do some, uh, 
uh, detail work because I can. The detail work is right here. That's one thing, guys. If you think, man, this is getting out of control and I'm losing it, put it anywhere. Put that mud somewhere so it's at least a good solid backing. And then what we're going to do, probably not on camera, is put the next coat on here. But on camera, I will show you how we, we finish this stuff because there's nothing to it, guys. Uh, this stuff is excellente for uh, interiors. That's why it's used and specced out for hospitals and schools. It got a lot of uh, benefits. Uh, what is it? It's perlite, volcanic glass. They take it from a mine and heat it up to about a 1600 degrees and it pops just like popcorn and it has so many uses guys. This is just another use for it. Anyway, we're out of mud, so Jay's going to mix me up some more. Or Dan, mix me up some more and I can finish this off. All right, guys, we've used all the material we have. So the low man on the totem pole, I uh, said, Dan, he goes, oh, no, I don't want to go to the material yard. I said, somebody got to go to the material yard. Now get your ass over there and get some. Give me two more bags of structolites. Anyway, you see these patches right here, guys? We didn't do them. Uh, we didn't do those. We did this one, and we're going to do this one. But here's another little patch that we didn't do, this little bitty guy here. What you do, guys, is, I mean, if you're doing this for yourself, you take a sponge float. It doesn't matter, green, uh, orange, it doesn't matter the color. But what you do is you, you float it in. Now, there's no other patches around here. I can see this one, but we didn't do that either. So what we're doing is we're taking it on its flat, flat side, and we're just feathering it in. We take, it, we take some of the fat from inside the patch and we just get it around the perimeter. You get it around on the perimeter so that when we're done, it, it looks a little bit prettier than this kind of stuff. These guys, uh, they plugged it, but it's not pretty. Um, I'm out of water, so I'm gonna put some water on this. I'm gonna tap this bucket right here, tap it out, tap it out. Glue bucket, always put your brushes in water. Otherwise, those would be hard as a rock. All right, so I'm tapping this out. Now, what I'm gonna do is, is hit these other two patches. And again, the fellows who did this, this is much better. These guys were pretty good. That's, it blends in a lot tighter. So, for the sake of showing you what I'm talking about, is these little uh, covers here, you take some of the fat from the middle and you bring it out to the edge of the existing. And that's how you feather in a patch, guys. And the same with the exterior. There's no different. Exterior patchwork, the exact same method, guys. So you take it from the inside and you go to the outside. And that makes a difference between a good looking patch and an ugly patch where somebody will say, hey man, you know what you're doing versus, dude, you suck. So that's, that's done. That's uh, it's a good a good perimeter patch. It's called feathering in, blending in the joint. This guy, I didn't. He had a clue. Okay, the same thing up here. We're gonna uh, blend it in. We're gonna feather in the joint. All right. So now I'm gonna take it this way, I, and I still have a little bit of moisture on this float. A little bit of water. Without the water, I can't blend in the joint. Let's feather it in. So I'm taking it here. Now I can tell this got it dried out. Why is it drying out? Because the structolite, the perlite, the volcanic glass is sucking the moisture right out of this. So I put some other in. And again, what we want to do is just, just take it lightly and feather in that joint a lot better than the other fellas. We're professionals, so we have to do it a little bit better. I'll show you a better example, guys. Okay, we only had a bag and a half when we came here, so we used that first bag. And you see how I improvise. I didn't want to just throw it away, so I put it where it's the, the largest holes. We got a lot of little small holes. We got hundreds of holes here, so we're going to be here a while. I just spread this out about five minutes ago, and this, we put the same amount of accelerators in it. So, for example, I'll show you how, right, we'll start from right here, guys. Let's see, I'm not sure if this is even ready, but if it's hard, 
or it's too soft. We can make it work. We have the technology. Okay, guys. So again, what I'm doing is I'm taking the existing into, or the new into the existing. I need to put a piece of tape on that. That's the second time I hit it with my head. Okay. Here, I want a straight line. Straight line. Come down. And I'm using a lot of water now because I want to take this into, I want to take the new into the existing. Guys. That's what you always want to do. Take the new into the existing. So when we're done, they go, wow, you guys are way better than the last guys. Uh -huh. And don't worry about covering the box, guys. Why? It's not necessary. I'll show you why in a minute. I'm going to clean this box with the same float that I'm using. Now, going up here, I want these kind of straight. You see how this corner is straight? See all this excess? I can get that off with my finger, trowel, or this float. I'll show you. We're going to take it here, and I'm going to use my eyeball to make that straight. And so I'm going to do that same method. Take this and go straight. Straight. That way when I add a little bit more uh, structural light, when Dan comes back, um, you know, I don't have enough here, I can already see. So, But when, I, when Dan comes back and we finish, I'll, I'll have to put a little bit of mud right there. Of course, I still got to do the patches. This is dried out. All the water, the moisture has been sucked out by this. So we add some more water. If you add too much water, what happens? Well, you pull your, your uh, structure off. You don't want to pull the structure light off. So you just want to float it. And that, with that, you need a certain amount of water. So what I'm doing here is I got a big holiday or big hole. I'm just getting that out, making it sandy, giving it the same appearance as the rest of the wall and usually I kind of go upward guys like right here I'll take the middle of the sponge float and hit the joint and that just blend it in a little bit better I'm not going to mess with this top piece anymore because I still have to add a little bit of uh, structure there structure light perlite okay so now we're because I didn't cover this yeah it's dirty I could take a wash rag guys and clean it out or I could use this bucket now all I'm doing, guys, is I'm cleaning the float. You clean it, flip it, put this end in, tap it out. Now, if I didn't have this paper, I wouldn't be doing that. I'd be doing it toward me. Okay, we want to tap out all of the color from here. Why do we want to tap that color out? Because we want to clean this utility cover. Boom, okay. Let's do that one more time on the other side. Pretty. Okay. Make it real pretty. And guys, it doesn't have to be perfect because you can always take a wash rag. And we got wash rags on our, on our truck and just go around it. So anyway, that's, that's pretty much how you um, bring the sand out of the aggregate with this uh, struck the light. Uh, anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and leave that. We got a whole, we got way too much stuff to be doing here to be messing around on the camera anymore. Anyway, my name is Kirk, Jason on the camera, Carl and Dan here too, or Dan's at the material yard. We thank you guys for watching and as usual, we'll see you on the next one. All right, folks, as always, thank you for watching another Giordano Stucco video. If you like what we do, please like and subscribe so we can keep making them. And as always, we'll, we'll see, see you on, on the, the next, next one. one.